Okay, so on these questions I was sent right here. Um, so the first thing is doing the leading coefficient test about the in behavior. And so if you have uh, an even power, then they're both either going to go up in both directions or down in both directions, right? Or rise and fall. Um, if you have odd, then you'll have one that goes up, one that goes down, or it could go the, uh, the other direction. And that will depend upon if the coefficient is positive or negative. So you have to look at the highest power. And so the way you have to do that is you, you have to multiply all this together, but not really because we only really care about the one with the highest exponent, right? So when you square x minus 3, you would get x squared, and you'd get some other stuff, but you the highest power would be x squared. And then you have your x plus 4, and then you have your x minus 1, right? And the plus 4 and minus 1 actually really don't matter in this case. Um, I mean, they're relevant to the problem, but not this part of it. So when you start to multiply this stuff together, this would get multiplied here, and then it would get multiplied there eventually. And so basically the lean coefficient would end up being x to the power of 4, and it has an understood power of 1 in front. There wasn't any negative values associated with those x's. So the lean coefficient is positive, and it's even. So since it's positive and even, it's going to be um, rising both uh, to the left and to the right. Now, if I would have had a negative value in front, then they would have both been falling. And then if it would have been odd, then it would have been up to the right, down to the left. And if it would have been negative in front and odd, then we would have had this scenario right here. Okay, but it's to the power of 4. It's positive in front, so it's going to rise in both directions. So let's see, rise to the left, rise to the right. So, and as you can see, it's marked C right there. Okay, so some of the other questions they're going to ask you um, is x-intercepts. And so you ask yourself, what makes each one of those factors equal zero? And so positive 3 would work, uh, negative 4 would work, and then positive 1 would work. Then what they're going to ask you is, okay, you got your x-intercepts. Now some of them cross the x-axis and some of them touch. So some of them are going to cross and some are going to touch. So let's see, we have one at 3, uh, negative 4, and then positive uh, 1 right there. Okay. All right, so what we're looking for is multiplicity, right? Okay. So if you have an even multiplicity, that means it's going to touch the graph and turn around. And so we have even multiplicity for our solution of 3 right here. So that one's going to turn around i'm not sure exactly how they um how they uh word it basically touch i think it says touch or something like that so at our solution of three what's going to happen and so i know back from the rises to the right so when i go through my last x-intercept i'm going to rise to the right and what's going to happen is it's going to touch and come back up go back down and then come back up so that's my graph looks something like that. It's probably not perfect, but it's a nice, you know, rough sketch, okay? Um, so my other solutions, uh, negative uh, 4 and 1, those are going to cross. So we'll say on that part where they ask us, do they, do they, you know, where do they, which ones cross? It would be negative 4 and positive 1. Okay, so then they probably ask you for the y-intercept. And so uh, for the y-intercept, you're just going to do f of zero. So you're going to have zero minus three to the power of two, uh, zero plus four times zero minus one. And so what happens here is when you square this, this will become a positive nine. Then we'll have times four times negative one. This will all come out to negative 36. So that would be my y intercept. Okay. And like I said, this was a rough sketch, so, you know, obviously it would be much further down, but that's fine. Um, then they're going to ask you if it's even, odd, or neither. Most of them are going to be neither, okay? So either they're symmetrical, like you were to cut it right down the y-axis, it's symmetrical on both sides, that would be even. Obviously that's not happening. 
Odd functions would be that like whatever's happening on the right side, the opposite would be happening on the left side, like exactly. Uh, so an example of an odd function is like this. If this goes up, then this would go down like that. It would be a, uh, it's a rotation of 180 degrees. Um, anyways, most of them are going to be neither. This one's neither, okay? And then the last part, they'll give you a graph. A, a multiple choice graph to choose from, and from this rough sketch right here, you should be able to figure it out pretty easily. All right, let's look at the other question that I received. Okay, so here, this is about um, solving these uh, quadratic, or I'm sorry, not quadratic, polynomials, where factoring is not a possibility. So these are not factorable. So the first thing you have to do is come up with the rational uh, possible solutions, okay? And so what you're supposed to do here is take this back number and you list all the all the values that could possibly give you um, seven. And so that would be plus minus, or I'm sorry, uh, all the values that divide into that value right there. So positive and negative one, positive and negative seven. Those are the only two values that divide into seven evenly. Then we do the same thing with the front number and that's gonna be our denominator. So that's going to be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 6. And then your final um, result that we're looking for is you look at all the combinations that could be created here. So when I divide them all by 1, basically I get seven, uh, 1 and 7 again. I'll get that again right there. Then next what I'll do is I'll divide them all by 2. So that's where the 1 half and the 7 over uh, 2 come from. Then I'll divide them all by 3, and that's where I get the 1 third and uh, 7 over 3. And once again, we always look at positive and negative. And then the last one, divide them all by 6, and that's where you get that. Now, what we basically have come up with is the possible solutions. It doesn't mean that they work. Most of them actually don't. But what you have to do is you just have to try one. So that's where our synthetic division comes in because it's really fast to try synthetic division to see if it works. So I'm going to write all this down. So I'm going to start with 1. Let's see if 1 works. So I drop down the 6. 6 times 1 is 6. This adds up to negative 41. Uh, negative 41 times 1 is negative 41. Uh, that adds up to, what is that, 5? I don't think this one's going to work. That doesn't work. Okay, so we just have to try another one. Oh, by the way, that should be negative 5, but it won't actually make a difference because you're getting negative 12 as a remainder. We're trying to get a remainder of 0. So I'm going to come down here to have a little bit more room. And let's try something different. So 1 didn't work. We could try negative 1, but I don't think that one works either. Actually, I think 7 will work. So let's see. We'll drop down the 6. 6 times 7 is 42. That adds up to negative 5. Uh, negative 5 times um, 7 is going to be 35, that, uh, negative 35, that adds up to a 1, 1 times 7 is negative 7, there we, um, positive 7, I'm sorry, so there we go, we get 0 as our remainder, and so basically what happened was you figured out 7 was a solution, so What's going on is that means x minus 7 was one of the factors, and my remainder is what's left behind, which would be 6x squared minus 5x plus 1. So you just drop it down by a power. So basically what I've done using the rational root uh, theorem here is I tried solutions till I got one, and basically what I've done is I've factored this. I factored this. This right here is the equivalent to what I have down here. This is the same thing. I've actually just kind of factored it because I figured out one of my solutions is 7. So then I have to figure out the other two. Now, sometimes you have to do the quadratic formula. In this particular case, it uh, it is factorable, so we can go ahead and factor it. But sometimes you're going to have to do the quadratic formula, so just be aware of that. So this is going to be um, 3x minus 1 and 2x minus 1. And so, see, this is the same thing as this right here. If you were to foil it together, that's equivalent. So now I've got all my solutions here. So my solutions are 7, 
one third and one half. And you'll notice that one third and one half was part of my rational uh, possible set from uh, up above. Okay. Now, like I said, be careful as you get into the later uh, problems, uh, the quadratic formula will probably be necessary.